If you are yet again asking, what in the doodle is image masking? Personally, I hope that as I get better at art, all parts of my paintings will have their own little masks. A visor and a knight's helmet, a hand, both shoes, are all good mask candidates. A knight's helmet benefits from several masks. One for the visor, others for any decorations and or layers of armor that go on top of the helmet. The biggest reason for masking is the ability to spray color on a helmet visor, for example, without any of that paint getting on the helmet beneath. I mention knight's armor because it is textured shiny metal. It is best to build up the colors here with long sprays that go up and down the armor. It wouldn't just be hard to color armor with a digital spray brush. It may be impossible to do it without use of layer masks. There does exist a simple mechanism for not going over the line. It is referred to as making a selection. And it draws an ant line around pixels in an image. Whatever is within that ant line will be impacted by a spray brush, for example. A digital painting requires selecting multiple things many times over, however. So it would be very boring to continue carefully selecting a little thing, then selecting something else, and then going back to reselecting the little thing, and over and over like that for hours. Here, the process of saving selection could be useful, but selections are a simple idea. Or, from another perspective, they have such a big problem that programmers don't really add a safe selection feature to a program. An antline selection is a yes or no or true or false mechanism with the potential of feathering the edges, though equally all around the selection. To make the long story short, Due to the yes or no nature of selection, you simply can't feather a shadow along with some sharp outline of some other artifact. But when you use masks, which by default use white for select and black for deselect, you are also allowed to use the shades of gray between black and white to mark selection strength. Another way to think about selection strength is transparency of the area in question. And now it becomes reasonable to gently keep a shadow selected for operations, but here you think of it in terms of transparency. After all, that is what feathering means. You don't completely affect the area, but do so just ever so barely, almost invisibly. Which is to say, transparency is involved. Masking is such a large feature that to make it go, programmers build it into the concept of layers. So the full name of the masking feature is layer masks. You may ask, Does Krita support layer masks? And someone will answer, Yes, yes, it does. It works just like in GIMP. This also means that you have to divide your image into layers while being mindful of masks. When a person is starting out digital painting, it may make sense to put an entire knight's helmet on a single layer. It is the very top of the knight. Keeping it on a separate layer is perfectly reasonable. But with masking, 
you want to break the helmet up into all its components. And you definitely want a separate layer mask for the helmet visor, because you will need to spray the metal gradient at a slight offset to make it seem raised. Finally, the feather on a knight's head is a good example of feathering. The feather will not use a white color, it will be bright gray to make the feather slightly, gently transparent. And the gray will get darker towards the edges to softly fade the feather out for that ultimate touch of headdress realism.